I stepped out of the gym and I saw somebody had tagged me in one of the stories yeah. and I'm like, is they this a bomb you? bag? No, no, I did not know. I did not you know. You just saw it. I, somebody, oh, nice. somebody had tagged uh, me and was yeah. like, is this a warp bag? And I was like, oh my God, they it ended is. up using it. And for a good 30 minutes, it was just like, I was breathless. I couldn't breathe. Oh, after like, the gym also, you must <laughs> have been on a dopamine high anyways. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, no, this is not real. This can't be. This can't be, you know, because that's like one show. If you know, it's the, too good to yes, be true. Yes, the kids yeah. born in 80s, yeah. they know that, you know, it was like the fashion Bible. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for another session of Taktuqa Fireside. I'm your host, Mayim Raja. I'm a stylist. And in today's episode, we sit down for a chat with Hira Babar, who is the founder of a Pakistani contemporary brand, well-renowned for their high-end leather accessories. Hi, Hira. How are you doing? Hi, Mariam. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Long time. It's been a while, actually. Uh, I do drop by sometimes to check out her stuff, and we launch into chats. So I, I'm very glad I'm actually sitting down with you and interviewing no you now. Yes. So um, we're in her showroom right now, and Dr. Khan has a really cute tea set up. So let's just get into it. You want to tell us a little bit about your showroom? Yeah, so we just like set up this space last year, just, just so, you know, we could have some clients over, some friends over, mm -hmm. you know, just to have a little chat. If there, anybody wants to come and see our stuff, what's happening, you know, just like a little meeting space slash lounge slash... Mm -hmm. Um, everything that goes in It's here, a really cozy yes. space. I love the interior and I believe this is your new pre-fall collection on the wall right now. Yes, it's the pre-fall collection, it's the spring-summer 22 collection, it's the classic collection. So basically everything that we have on, um, you know, on the shelf right now mm -hmm. that we're selling. So everything is displayed here. So it's just like, you know, we keep on changing the space according to whatever um, collections are out there and going on. So just for people to come and have a look i like it it's a, like a little playroom yes. we have a few things set up over here as well that we're getting to later but sure. i want to start off with asking you what how, how did you go about creating this brand you were telling me earlier that you don't have you haven't officially studied design yeah. i find that really interesting and i want to know more how did you get into this well i i like now when I, you know, think about it, I feel like mo my motivations and objectives were multifold. I wanted to create a brand which was homegrown, mm -hmm. uh, you know, everything made in Pakistan because I just see so much potential here and all of it like getting going to waste. Yeah. And um, so, 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 you know, that was the idea behind it. But then when we sat down, like, you know, this is what we want to make. The next step was it has to be something different. It has to be something unique. Yes, mm -hmm. you know, build upon the foundation of being made in Pakistan, but something that, you know, uh, gets you the ticket to be out there in the international fashion space as well. Mm -hmm. um, I've always wanted to work in the fashion and design space. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't know what to start off with. Yeah. I did not want to do clothes. I just yeah. think that... Um, Human beings just make everything complicated. <laughs> so I, just I feel like the human body is really complex <laughs> yes, also. Exactly. You can't fit to size. Yes. So it's hard to kind of just start a brand that I feel like is just like, made, it has to be made to order, I feel. Yes. So I did not want to get into yeah. all those complexities. And also the fact that I feel uh, accessories, especially handbags, are much more universal and much more inclusive in yes. terms of anybody, whatever ethnicity they belong yeah. to, whatever shape, size, color, any, anybody can, you know, rock a handbag. And it's the most fun part of your outfit, I feel, yes. as well. Like, I sometimes design my outfit around the bag right. and accessories that I'm going to be carrying for the yes. day. Also, we have so many things to carry, so it's perfect. So the, to package that's it what I wanted nicely. to make as yeah. well. Like, you know, that's what I wanted to make as well. Like, you know, the bag mm -hmm. should be the accessory. Yeah. Uh, around which, you know, you, you design your outfit, you put your whole outfit together. Yeah. Like, they need to have a personality of their own. Yeah. So, um, kind of looking at your collection, you have all ranges and sizes of bags. You have the big tote bags, you have the wallets, you have the mini clutches, you have something that you can wear on a daily basis, something that you can wear casually as well. I wanna know what's your favorite bag? What's your favorite size of bag? I feel like it's also very, something that's very particular, I think, to a person's style. I used to be a big tote person. Yeah. But eventually I realized that I don't like carrying so much stuff around. Yeah. And that's when I want, I, so that one right there, like if you can see the, 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 the clutch. clutch. Yes, yeah. it's, it's the clutch. Can you give it to me? Yeah. So this is, this is like my favorite style and my yeah. favorite design. I feel for like, every day? Yeah, for every day as well. And like for, 
for every day and yeah. for everything like you can dress up you could dress down mm -hmm. and uh, when we were designing it I wanted to ensure that you know you could put in slide in your mobile well, phone yes. in it by the way uh, a little like wallet you know every like this little conversation and everything yeah. so it's like kind of perfect size yeah. that you can carry to a formal evening and also yes. tote around all day as well this is actually one of my favorite pieces from the collections that i have yet to get i know but this is something that i feel is so perfect for evening wear there was definitely a gap in the market i feel for evening styles that you can dress up or dress down depending on the occasion that you're going in and i really like the materials that you use there is definitely a good quality to it so but i also believe that you are an active advocate of sustainable practices so how do you manage that balancing both those things quality and sustainability it's a challenge i feel if you understand the concept of sustainability that yes. is that you know something that lasts something that is that is not made by exploiting nature or by exploiting people mm -hmm. or by exploiting environment or something that is not artificially done yeah so when when you are you know incorporating all those practices within your uh, entire value chain system i do believe that you know you end up with a good high quality product um so we're very particular about like who do we work with who mm -hmm. do we source our materials from i only work with uh two to three different tanneries here in pakistan who are mm -hmm. like you know have are certified according to all the environmental regulations they don't ha have any child labor yeah. um they incorporate the best practices while also during the process you know they they don't do um lead tanning of um, just mm. technical term no i want to know like, yeah so it's like you know since we're very careful in choosing our partners like who do we work with mm. and especially because the idea was that we have to make a very home grown uh, label but yeah. also i wanted to sell to the entire world yeah. so when you once you step outside parks and people are very conscious I feel like this the international consumer especially is becoming very aware of business practices yes. and i feel like it for a while became a trend to be this brand that markets themselves yes. as oh we're sustainable we're using recycled polyester when in it fact it's a polyester is, is the problem yes. you know so i mean props for effort but i feel like there is like a bit of greenwashing going on so i really like and i can feel the quality when i when you see the products up close you can tell that the quality is really high end and thought has been put into making sure that you know it's 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 intentional it's yeah. not something that just kind of happened speaking of international consumer i feel like some interesting exciting things have been happening with you um warp was recently featured i don't know if you guys know in the show and just like that i feel like the girlies who are like real SATC followers yes no and I was, I, I was really excited for you and that's like a big prominent bag that's really featured because the girl and it's so perfect actually because the girl is getting ready she's throwing her bag on and grabbing her things and about to run out the door and it's can we see the bag I think it's that one it's, it's that one it's, the, it's that green. one that's the star it's bag it's a beautiful bag and I feel like you have this color green also like one of the first colors that I really like from your collection let's talk about that how did it feel um, I was over the moon did I, you I, know I that was I, happening I knew for sure. I I did not know that she so, so the team contacted us mm -hmm. uh, last year around mm -hmm. July when the shoot was about to start yeah. for the, for the new season and so they asked for 10 different bags and they did not tell who is it for whether they'll be using it okay. or not and they they held on to all the pieces till the last day of the shoot mm -hmm. and um till the time the episode aired i did not know if mm. you know any of the bag got featured or not it is a gamble it was a gamble being a stylist yes. i know what happens and it's such a commitment yes. that you have with the brand also okay they're expecting to see something and sometimes it doesn't get featured cuz oh it just didn't work out on set i was just i was just yeah. manifesting it i don't yeah. know i just had this feeling that you know at least one of the pieces might maybe you know somewhere in the background but they might end up using it yeah. but so, but like for for those entire 8 9 months i did not uh, have this negative feeling or thought that long the time. I, it is and also like you know keeping it yeah. in you not sharing with anybody because you don't know if you know they ended up using it or not huh. but i still remember someone someone had just like i stepped out of the gym and i saw somebody had tagged me in some of the stories yeah. and i'm like is they this a warm bag no no i did not know i don't know you know. just saw it I, somebody oh, nice. somebody had tagged uh, me and was yeah. like is this a warm bag and i was like oh my god they it ended is. up using it and for a good 30 minutes it was just like i was breathless i couldn't breathe Both after <laughs> the gym also you must yeah. have been on a dopamine high anyways yeah. <laughs> so i was like no this is not real this can't be this can't be you know because that's like one show if you know, it's the, too good to yeah, be true yeah the kids yeah. born in 80s yeah. they know that you know it was like the fashion bible 
it yeah, was the fashion following. bible when we had no social media nothing yeah. so people, i remember you know getting magazines and just following each and everything yeah. each character was wearing so it was like um to this day they're relevant by the way i feel like i yes. still watch the show and i see her wearing some things that are actually going back into style yes. now like the rosettes and all. so yeah no, they are very much relevant like yeah. uh this has been our best seller bag for the past three months exciting yes and it's like you know um we're getting we're getting sales from all over the mm-hmm. world the it's it's kind of like you know the brand has kind of arrived in the international you know, international scene. scene because now the people know about mm-hmm. it thanks to the show like you know because if you yeah. made it to you know any such kind of prestigious platform then you're validated yeah so kind of definitely so, yeah. the biggest validation and i feel like also i think vogue india yes did a whole article about yes. you after that and so just you, that yeah so they just like picked it up and and on their own organically on, on their own and uh, we were just like warp was just tagged on and that's how we found out and the best part was like you know the headline which is like this yes, pakistani by brand by the way yeah was seen in and just like that show so i i i feel like that was the highlight we have been uh, showcasing during official trade shows uh, mm-hmm. during paris fashion week yeah pre covid also did one season last year mm-hmm. uh we've also been part of some um um trade shows and showcases in milan okay so um, and each season is like it's like a learning experience yeah. at least if you don't gain anything out of it mm-hmm. we know that you know these are the things that we should not be doing okay got so it. that is kind of interesting you know uh, and do you feel there's a difference between the international and con- local consumer for your brand definitely no <laughs> <laughs> We were discussing this so there are some insights. <laughs> <laughs> Now I feel like uh so we the local customer is also getting there as we see like you know more girls stepping into the job market they're earning, yes, they're becoming the financially independent they're becoming more self aware of their own mm-hmm. personal style identifying who they are rather yeah. than just being told by different XYZ lawn brands or somebody like you know, like yeah, yeah this is how you should be dressing up yeah. so in that way i feel like there's a slight there's there's some difference mm-hmm. uh, internationally customers are much more aware of their pers- personal style mm-hmm. like we would see yes us getting tagged in yeah. you know where uh, the girls from outside pakistan carrying bags in very different ways like they yeah. would mix and match and pair them with uh, chains and straps yeah. the ones that don't come with the bag or yeah. maybe like you know oh carry them in a very different way speaking of accessorizing and using your stuff i feel like this is one of my we're going to get dig into the products now the fun part um some of my favorite products have recently been this wallet that is just i feel like it you you brought this about at a very good time when micro bags was also a trend yes. and i feel like this serves so many functions i feel so i i think it you did it already in one of your campaigns where you kind of looped a chain through it and then i also styled it that way so you're not giving people chains i heard <laughs> that they're not happy about but i feel like that's not something that someone has to wait for a brand to do again like you said about personal style it's something that like all of us have a necklace you can just chain through it and yes. it comes down to styling at the end of the day so that was the idea like you know we want yeah. to we want to show that in our in our uh, marketing campaigns we want to show yeah. them show it in our photo, you know photography and our video campaigns that uh, these are the different ways that you can carry the bag i mean just yeah. have fun with it yes. you know just have fun with it because we design them as having a unique individual personality like i feel like every bag every design kind of serves a different function for me like i could have probably three in my wardrobe for different purposes and the way that i would carry them and style them with the colors with the cuts serve yeah, a different purpose yeah we just greedy we just want to own yeah. your entire wardrobe yeah i know <laughs> to totally honestly to guys night. one stop <laughs> shop you got you all your bag situation sorted here day to night all sizes but i also you recently are now fully manufacturing locally you yeah. trained your staff and i feel like you have a very unique product over here the way that you you know manipulate the material to look like origami i feel like that has been your trademark for me at least i've been seeing this since the beginning that you yeah. started this it must be a challenge though so it's more like a collaborative learning process mm-hmm. because uh like we were having a chat before um i do not have a design background and yeah. that was kind of you know it had it works as well like mm-hmm. it worked in my favor because i did not come with any preconceived notions right so it was like you know let's just make uh, something look alike out of a paper yeah. out of paper you know if we, then i was like you know if we can make a paper model why can't we just like uh, use the same way to make it out of leather 
but mm. you know just to make it a little sturdy uh yeah. maybe we need to put some support behind it so that's how you know trial we just, and error. yeah trial and error. we just came up with our own way of constructing a bag yeah. and that just like you know set its own tone of creating the whole brand mm-hmm. um aesthetic around it so we're we're also like uh so it's not just everybody asks me also oh, you're just going to do geometric hard bags it's like no <laughs> we're going to venture into like you know more yeah. fluid forms but yeah. the idea was to play around the, with yeah. the form but um I that com- was your initial inspiration yes that was yeah. the initial inspiration i would like to come back to the point where i said that you know it's more like a collaborative learning process yeah. so we can't do it without a craftsman yeah we have to sit 100%. with them because they bring in a certain set of knowledge that yeah. we don't have and we bring the technical aspect the technical of things, aspects yeah. of things and we bring in probably like the thinking thinking angle where we actually encourage them and force them to think in a different way mm-hmm. and you know just figure out things uh collaboratively that let's just do it you know a different way or let's just figure mm-hmm. things out so so it's more like learning on the go for both of us i want to talk about exposure a little bit i feel like you know we talked about how the local consumer is getting exposure now i feel like because of social media now you see what's happening internationally in terms of trends and style the local audience is kind of adopting it how do you feel like from the production end from your manufacturing end um if the local artisan has that exposure because you said that you collaborate it's yeah. a two way process so how do you go about that it's very interesting because when 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 i started because i do you know um the first question also still i get when i say that you know i work with local artisans mm-hmm. and it's a very handcrafted product and everything yeah. so everybody's like acha so uh what's it like working with labor you know hmm. sar to bahut khate yeah. honge so i'm like you know initially i also had this there approach. is a stereotype yes, there is a stereotype yeah. but it's just but the fact is that um yes there are challenges but those mm. challenges are things like you know uh, um you speak a different language they speak yeah. a different language like i'm not talking about in literal Do-do. terms yeah. like i'm not talking about like literal english urdu yeah. or anything like that talking but like in terms of like you know technical uh, terms technic- and and their otherwise exposure. also like you know existing the, 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 their realities mm. so that's different if somebody who does not know what is required of them or what high end quality is or what does that mean yeah. you can't expect them to give it to you going a little off topic over here but i feel like the the effort that you put into shoots as well that i feel like i really appreciate as a stylist cuz you know you're just like doing a standard photo of um you know a product and everyone can just see it from all sides you're selling a lifestyle yes and that is what i feel like the local audience doesn't realize is what all of these brands internationally that we look up to and aspire to that is so expensive and exclusive and you know out of reach that's what they're doing absolutely like you know it's it's the, it's the whole storytelling it's whole how you put yourself mm-hmm. out there because you see at the end of the day i can just re- reduce it to a mere handbag yeah. handbag themselves are like luxury it's not essential yes like, exactly so you have to we have to create we have to show that you know it's why it's a dream it's a dream the like, girl wants it girl. yes you need to have it yeah. they say that yes. it takes a whole village like yes. that that puts an effort in it like yeah. you mentioned so so their designers their craftsman community yep. their people marketing professionals then you know when you know when we're doing the campaigns and everything the mm-hmm. photographer stylist makeup yeah. artist so, so so one mere handbag is There's just crea- creating a very big value chain yeah that's you're creating what, jobs yes. for people so yeah. that's that's where the value is being created mm-hmm. and yes like if i i I don't apologize for charging a hefty price for mm-hmm. it because that's how I value what we are creating yes. and that's the value that we are sharing with the rest of the community that mm. is you know working together to build it every time we're working on something new mm-hmm. like I'm so stressed out of the fact like anything that we bring out next mm-hmm. into the market has to be better than the previous one because people start expecting that from a brand you yeah. know it's like you can't make a mistake that's a lot of pressure yes that's a lot of yeah. pressure so uh dealing with that struggling mm-hmm. with that kind of you know um everyday uh, challenges reminding yourself that you know you're only human yeah that's that's kind of a little challenging no but i like this mindset i really admire this and it's something that i believe in as well cuz we're living in this world right now where everything's so fast paced there's so many brands popping up so there is this element of like you know brands looking towards others for competition but i like this idea that you're in competition with yourself how do you outdo yourself and i want to know like by the way did you realize it's been 7 years since you've been running long time it's it, 
it seems like forever yeah. <laughs> but also like you not know when somebody yeah when somebody points out like seven years that also yeah. like like oh my god it's been that long seven years plus covid by the way i feel like that's a whole another like time warp that has i don't i don't i don't consider covid i just like you know we skip two years <laughs> I feel like those two years didn't count, so I have two yeah. years added on. Yeah. But anyways, I feel like you know it's been a while. I feel like you would have a lot of experience by now in all kinds of situations. Have you ever felt like you know you were landing in a situation that that was too much to handle, and you were like, I can't do this. How am I going to move forward from this point? I feel like every other day. Yeah. Every other day. Yeah. I'm oh like, my god, oh, that's I a can't. hard life. <laughs> when you're so invested into something and you put in so much of time and effort into it and it always becomes like you know mm. uh, let's just see uh, w- yeah. what will happen you know either you'll fail but what if you succeed yeah so now it's just always like this i think that's the life of an entrepreneur like there are all these memes that oh when you're an entrepreneur you're not employed by someone else you have yes. your own business you're just 24/7 at work you yeah. can't shut it off how has your journey journey been with, for you how has this entrepreneurial journey been for you like personally and professionally like i feel like it's kind of merged is it there does. a clear line for you have you tried to separate your personal and professional lives i feel it just it just the two they just like merge mm-hmm. because um there's so much of overlap in what you're doing and you know you're absorbing all of the all of the situations that you are part of and you know the people that you work with because you do you know interact with everybody also in sort of like some sort of personal level so i feel like you know your personal and professional life kind of mer- merges yeah. and there's you, no off switch you know if you are firefighting at work all the time trying to come up with solutions that that just part, becomes part of your personality so even like in everyday daily routine so if in your personal life there's some situations you know there's something going on so you're like okay you know let's just figure out a way how to fix it any like words of wisdom you would like to pass on to um, anyone starting out their business in pakistan I'm not just really do it. Yeah, I'm not really <laughs> sure that I'm in a position to share, give some advice or mm. um but I can share from my experience. Yeah. And that is that you need to show up like every day. Mm-hmm. You just need to show up even on the days when you don't feel like mentally, physically, you need to show up. Yes, you can slow down. You can take it easy. Yeah. Um but um we just have to be consistent and persistent in whatever mm-hmm. you're do- doing or whatever journey you have set out for yourself. you just have to do you just have to show up i have a fun question um sure. i want to know who's the warp girl and if you could describe the essence of warp's brand personality in three words what would they be um three words uh or more if you want <laughs> or I, less i i i can do it on uh, i can do it in a phrase i feel like yeah the warp girl is someone who dances to her own tune like i said that you know uh, we do design f- keeping certain things yeah. probably in elements in mind but then, i remember the chain in the bag yes so that's you know that tune. that was your thing yeah. that was your thing so that's somebody somebody who dances to your to their yeah, own tune, tune and they don't conform they're like bold and yeah. at the same time uh versatile and flamboyant and yeah they do not conform that's beautiful i love that i feel like i'm going to market your brand that way every time <laughs> i carry some product Acha and also um I was wondering if you have any celebrity I mean already you hit the jackpot with and just like that <laughs> but since that's already done setting your sights higher if you have any celebrity in mind that you would want to collaborate with or you know design an accessory for a custom accessory for inspired by them like do you have a girl in mind when you design your products I started going for evening walks in Walden uh-huh. Park and I realized that I didn't have anything just to carry my phone so I was like that's yes. how we came up with the mobile pouch. So you really do have all the products. And I love how there's a card holder spot because yeah. yeah, when I run out of my house, I grab my phone and I might grab my wallet. Yes, yeah, so money or yeah. yeah, so this way you don't lose the card. I love it. And it's a fun color. That's like the where the first thought comes from like it's like if I need it then obviously you know there are other people around that also need yeah. it. But yes, I would definitely want to you know sit down with few ladies and on a design yes, by the way can i suggest that cuz i f- i was going to ask you if people ask you to make custom things for them if they send you any ideas or something cuz i mean if you're a girl and you're thinking of you know i have this problem let me design a solution do you have that audience uh we do get a lot of requests but um currently we are not um entertaining them because it just you know it yeah it is hard you know managing yeah. the supply chain and everything yeah. because um it's not very easy to um, you know um, 
cater to everybody's demands. But I'm sure incorporate it in your next collections as you go. Well, I do plan on, you know, providing customization later on yeah. at, at a certain stage where we can uh, as a so business. Awesome. I'm excited as for that. Business. Yeah. So what's the future looking like for Warp? Are you working on any exciting projects? We are like, um, I feel we have set the basis right for our brand and mm -hmm. now I really want to uh, experiment more with the product, more with the techniques, how yeah. you know we can incorporate a different kind of materials, tech, uh, uh, textiles with leather, uh, also make more use of our local handicrafts and voyaging tech techniques mm -hmm. and you know like all the local crafts, how we yeah. can incorporate that and embody that in our product portfolio. Um, so that's that's in the pipeline uh taking like i said like taking more risk and more um, more risk with more innovative products mm -hmm. and uh um, we're also planning on working on a jewelry line so. by the way i was looking out to your <gasps> bubbles and i was like girls got style we need some of this <laughs> and the chains for the bags Really, like, tell me more. Can you tell us more about that? Um, it's just, it's it's still in, in a very infant stage. Mm -hmm. um, can't really, like, share a lot, but still, yeah. like, uh, it's something that probably would are come... Are you working on any prototypes? Yes, we are. We are working with the right, you know, just you trying people. to find the right people who, okay. who understand the vision mm -hmm. um, and who can also be, like, you know, long-term partners to work with. Yeah. But hopefully... Um, it's a challenge, but I feel yes. like laying the foundation right, you're sorted after yes. that. Yeah. So we're hopefully, if things go right, then inshallah. probably next yeah. year, inshallah, by you know, oh, next exciting. year we would have something like a work jewelry line. Yeah. yeah, inshallah, I can't wait. <laughs> One more, I, and I don't want to put a damper on things, but I do feel like, you know, something that everyone currently in Pakistan is experiencing, I don't know if we're talking about it, like the economy and the hopelessness that comes with it, but also we've come so far. You've laid down the foundation, you're setting your sights on this. I feel like, you know, how, if, if there's any advice that you would want to give or anything that you have in mind that you're feeling and thinking in this current situation in terms of being a brand um, owner. Oh, God. You know, it's a loaded <laughs> question right at the end. <laughs> um, well, there's some things that, you know, you're completely helpless about. Yeah. Uh, like you touched upon the economic situation of the country. Mm. Um, so in, I'm. Um, you can't, and the you know, there's, yes, the circumstances, yeah. there's a rise inflation and everything. Yeah. And that is, you know, as a business that puts a lot of pressure on you because, you know, you have, you have your workforce, you have your people yeah. who are also going through that entire, you know, and you can't drop inflation. your quality, but then you also yes. have to manage costs somehow. Cost. So we just try to like, maybe, you know, look for more avenues that maybe we can reach out to international markets and mm -hmm. try to uh, sell our product more over there yeah. in, in USDs and mm. you know just reap the benefits of rising dollar yeah. so that you know we can balance it out locally here. Yeah. I am a very hopeful optimist person I do feel yeah. like you know uh, even because there's just so much of opportunity here yes by the way but um, there's massive market gaps we just we just need we just need a good five ten year plan that you know just keeps the country on track yeah. you know everybody just keeps working and but I do feel like you and business owners like you are one of the reasons that's keeping the economy float don't you think like I, I think it's really admirable like you have all these people employed you're trying to support the economy in some way like I don't I don't know if you're doing that intentionally but you are doing yeah. that um, and let's let's just not also forget our amazing customers. They're also yes. they're they're keeping us afloat. Yes. They're keeping us afloat. So let's just not, you know, forget the contribution of our amazing customers. Yeah. During COVID, our local sales just like picked up. Yeah, by the way, people were staying at home. But I love yes. that we're still shopping. Like I, I was, was I was actually amazed. I was like, like treating ourselves. Um clothes still make sense because mm -hmm. you need to clothe yourself every day, even if you're at home. Where are these girls taking the bags? Yeah. But like, I mean, I'm very thankful and, very, and I'm very grateful for all the love and support uh, that, you know, they've shown to the brand. But that's that's when, you know, um, like we did not lay off any of our yeah. staff. We did not stop our production yeah. because the sales was just coming in. No, I think, it's, I think it's like a dopamine hit. Yes. That's what I was serving because even if we're not wearing those things, like we're not going out, we're not spending on food and all of those yeah. things. So you kind of had that money piling up. What do I do with it? Let me get a bag. And I feel like, I don't know if anyone else does this, but something that I do, I feel like, you know, sometimes I'll buy things that I really like to mark a point in my life 
or to celebrate something. Yes. I remember like when I got a promotion, I went and I got this p- pair of pink metallic heels and I associate those that achievement yes. with those heels. So every time, it's sweet. I feel like as girls and it's it's a thing to associate sentimental value to yes. material things. So it's not just a bag. It's something that reminds you of COVID reminds times of COVID. <laughs> and the joy it brought you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I feel, I feel like, um, I mean, you need, you should be able to find joy and yeah. meaning in mm. every little thing and, and at mm. all times because um, I mean we all know like you know what the, the situation of the country is like mm. and it's not just here it's like all over the world yeah and so um, yeah like if, if buying a handbag makes you happy then I'm happy to be part of your happiness and yeah. you know sharing and this will actually you. last you a lifetime <laughs> yes because <laughs> it's real leather and it's sustainable and handcrafted Yes. And yeah, just have to say, very proud of what you've done here and can't wait to see what you achieve more. Thank you, Mariam. And the audience hopefully is here for the long haul. And yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. And I really enjoyed this chat and getting to know more about you and your thought behind you, how you run your business. I hope the audience had something to gain as well. And yeah, all the best to you in all your future ventures. Thank you, Mariam, for having me. And thank you, Dr. Khan, for um, hosting with such a you know, wonderful tea. It was lovely having this chat. Thank you.